Hey, how's it going? It's Grant with the Garden of Eater. And Shelby. And today we're going to be going through talking about all of your shrimp questions or answering all of your shrimp questions and just going over what happened in this past week, keeping you all updated. Want to say hi to everybody? Yeah, there's quite a bit. Everyone came in pretty early. Hello, Jamie. And we got Big Dog. We're going to scroll through, then we'll come back to the comments. Hello, DJ Owen. Hello, Frank. How you doing? How's it going, guys? Scotty the Fish Freak. How you doing? And then we got Mark Sterlison. Richard, how you doing? We got Dr. Anthony. How you doing? How's it going? He says he's watching till he fell asleep. Hello, Lefty. How's it going, Lefty? Saw the video of the unboxing. You guys haven't already checked that one out go head over to lefty's channel and uh he got a surprise box from us today all right you want to move on to the first question or yeah do you want to let's dive right in so big dog asks how do you oh wait sorry how... do you know how to lower cage in the water so the only way to lower your cage in the water is by taking out the water that has cage in it and replacing it with water that doesn't. There's not a lot of things that are going to absorb cage out of the water. Um, new substrate might take out a little bit, but it really shouldn't be uh, a, a use for this situation. Um, you want to use RO water that has GH only minerals in it. You can get several different brands out there we recommend the salty shrimp it's a salt you mix it in and they have a gh and a gh cage version for this point you would want the gh only version and that way it's not going to alter your ph or your other parameters with having the cage in it so the only way to get that cage lower is by using ro water and having the right amount of gh to cage ratio that you want and he also said, mineral shrimp rock, is that good for shrimp tank? Uh, it's, it's all right, but we've, we've never had to use those. Uh, as long as you're doing proper water changes and you have a nice variety of foods, you're giving your uh, shrimp all of those healthy minerals uh, through their diet, you don't have to add the mineral blocks. That's for like people who don't want to add any minerals to the water and their tap water's coming out like super soft. All right, we had a... Few people join in. How you doing, Robert Bloomfield? How's it going, man? And we got Gary from GK Aquatics. How's it going, Gary? Hope you're feeling better this week. And we got Jeff Kane. How you doing? And Chris George. And hello, Sandy. How's it going, guys? Hello. And hello, Ebor and Didi. Hello. Oh, and, and Leo. <laughs> So a couple things to talk about. Uh, I got another one. Hello, Ar Arctic Winds. How's it going? Uh, first thing I want to talk about, get this off our list, is uh, we've got some big laws that are trying to be passed here in Florida that can really uh, put a damper on the pet industry. And the sad thing is, is like they're trying it out on Florida. If it goes through in Florida, it can very easily move and spread on to these other states. Um, so there is a uh, quick petition going around. If you live in Florida, change.org, uh, you can go through, sign the petition and help that out. If you want to learn more, you can go to USARC or USARK. US, I want to say USARC, but it's not. It's USA Reptile Keepers, and uh, they are really um, going into it as far as they can to help the industry uh, make sure that none of the laws that are passed make it to where uh, we won't be able to keep certain reptiles that there shouldn't be any issue like I, I understand like certain invasive species we shouldn't be allowed to keep those and whatnot but like uh, they're going after all sorts of species and before we know it if we don't act and stand our ground uh, we could lose everything that's not whitelisted and whitelisted is like cats and dogs and stuff that they want to spend the research and development into uh, to make sure that they're not invasive when really cats are like the most invasive creature on the entire planet so it's just you can't get rid of cat owners so you, you're gonna have to deal with the cats but yeah, sadly they're getting rid of like i understand the snake issue in south florida the iguana issue but once you pass uh the pasco line uh, where we live really all of these invasive species, they don't stand a chance because it'll freeze two or three times 
a year here and that just wipes out all of those uh tropical climate animals that make their way this far north okay i'm gonna interrupt you apparently gary became a member before we started the stream so you get oh. your little video thanks for joining the team appreciate that gary and welcome in spaghetti nona and jay oliver's guppies how you guys doing how's it going man you've got a question you're not staying on top i really gotta put my contacts in why are your contacts not in for <laughs> another stream <laughs> having shrimp die one a day what do i need to do uh, I need to that <laughs> all right so having a shrimp die once a day this is going to be uh, a telltale sign that you have a bacterial infection in the tank uh, this can happen a couple different ways it is getting to the time of the year where possibly you had a uh, heat temperature spike uh, the shrimp depending on what kind of shrimp caradina tigers especially uh, once the water gets above 74 to 76 uh, you start to see issues with illnesses just like a hospital we recommend keeping your shrimp tanks as cool as possible that way any bacterial infections or anything like that uh, they really don't thrive in the cooler waters so therefore keep the temperatures down as much as possible i understand with the uh, hotter temperatures in some of the southern states uh, there's a lot of climates where they don't really require ac all year round but then you get a certain couple of days or a week out of the year where temperatures really uh, kind of creep up and uh your tanks could be getting into the 80s and that that could be an issue um the other thing is overfeeding um you maybe need to cut back and if there's any issues with uh, ammonia in the water from overfeeding and stuff like that maybe uh you're, you're checking like when you have a dead shrimp in there isn't an ammonia uh, issue but after you've fed for a while maybe overnight there's too much water uh, pollu uh pollution in the water column and that's creating issues overnight um but uh, possibly you touch the substrate maybe with a water change you flooded it a little bit too fast or you moved around a plant did some aquascaping rearranging uh, what happens is when you disrupt the substrate you might have released some type of pathogen that was underneath and it went airborne or waterborne in this case and got into your shrimp so uh, if you do have a bacterial infection what you're going to want to do is water changes are going to be your best friend uh, 50 to 60 percent water changes every couple of days is going to be all right uh, you want to make sure the water is as clean and as pristine as you possibly can have it that way the immune system of the shrimp is going to be running at, at full capacity and then the other thing you can do is add botanicals or tannins into the water uh, we recommend one indian almond leaf per 10 gallons plus one so if you have a 30 gallon tank we use four indian almond leaves uh, you could use other like all their cones and stuff like that too. But I, I really feel like the most bang for your buck is going to be those Indian almond leaves. And this is actually the only real situation where we would use those at uh, besides a bacterial infection. We never use the leaves. They just break down and create a ton of mulm. So uh, we try not to use that. Uh, and if you don't want to use the botanicals, there are black water extracts. Brightwell sells one. Fritz sells one. Uh, th those will add a lot of uh beneficial uh bacteria um and probiotics into the system and help uh help out a lot of antifungal properties too so lefty said so what do i need to not kill these shrimp all uh, right just keep them away from fish man and, and keep up with your water changes and as long as you've got you know somewhat decent if you, you can keep fish in your water you should be able to keep the shrimp and my my big thing is don't overfeed underfeed and uh just make sure you put chlorine uh dechlorinator uh to get the tap water conditioned and you should be fine man just stay on top of your water changes every other week 30 percent on water changes and they should thrive they're super easy like we keep them outside and my whole thing was with the shrimp outdoors if they didn't make it it was on them like it was survival of the fittest out there no no chillers during the summer degrees got uh into the 90s and then you know in the winter times no heaters dropped down into the 30s and really no conditioning of the water just some prime to the tap water and uh 
I don't even like mix the water beforehand. We just turn the hose on full blast and put in the prime as we're doing it. And uh, the shrimp thrive outside. And they do really well inside the tanks too. So, so Gary had to use his desktop to join. That's fine. <laughs> uh mark said i have very soft water tds about three what should i do what would i need to do for caradina shrimp so you're going to want to make sure you have the aqua soil without the aqua soil you're not going to be able to succeed with the stable low ph and uh, then once you have the aqua soil sponge filter or something like that make sure none of the babies get sucked up some proper filtration and then the only other thing you're going to need is some salty shrimp gh plus we want to make sure it's GH only minerals. Any KH is going to mess with the pH of the water. So as long as you, uh, you know, have that low of TDS right out the tap water, I mean, that's, you might have a water softener or something in your system, but that is super low. I'm very jealous. Uh, but just stay on top of that check because uh, before you mix your water, if it was any higher than three TDS, say it was like 14 or something like that, I'd probably still run it through like an RO buddy or something like that because you might have one cage in that 13, 14 TDS. Sorry, I said, Grant, I think you need to pay Shelby more. <laughs> make her full time so she can make the member video longer and keep her contacts. I completely forgot to write. Can you write that down so I don't forget? Yeah. I forget everything. <laughs> Once we leave here, we go straight to bed. And it jumped. Richard said, do you have any A-grade orange-eyed blue tigers for sale? Um, so we, we just those. we just sell the mixed grade. I don't I don't like to give away like all just of one grade because then it leaves me with a ton of blondes or something like that. So uh, if you're looking for solid uh blues uh message me but the price is going to be a little higher of course and we got a few people that joined us hello scuba steve and we got jimmy p and made it this week he said nice to see you too how's it going guys and nice I to saw. see you too <laughs> the nano aquarium guy how's it going man and that's it we're back up and Leo said, I'm going to message you this week and need to place my order for the Caradina shrimp. Oh, if you have any other questions before you get the shrimp, tonight's the night. You guys any, need to know anything like that or help with your tanks or anything like that. Uh, we have other plans in the future on uh, some topics for live streams. But tonight we're kind of like in the middle of a bunch of different things. So we thought we'd just go through, talk with chat, answer out some questions, and then uh, go through some other little things on the list but not not much to go through this big dog asks, can it be the snail digging in the soil that way so as long as it's just snails they tend to go through it so slow that it really isn't an issue plus the snails tend to go uh throughout the entire tank constantly so that really isn't an issue it's more or less when you bring up an entire root system or uh really make a big dent or a bunch of the bubbles as the snails dig through the substrate, they don't really kick up too much uh, bubbles out of it. Mark said, the water here is from all rain filtered through forests that have not been logged for a hundred years. Where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. New Zealand, maybe? That sounds like it. Lefty said, what kind were these, by the way? Blue dreams? Blue diamonds. I made a comment on, I'm sorry. Uh, I made a comment on, on your video. Uh, they should be really nice, great blue, uh, not a lot of culling, and just as hardy as any other Neocaridina shrimp that are going to be out there. So you said your favorite color was blue. They might throw a couple blacks, but you shouldn't get any other color but the blue and blacks. So Gubby Beast, do you worry about tadpoles in your outdoor tubs, tanks, ponds? I can't read now. It's tadpoles. It's at the top of the list. I have neos, oh. guppies, and tadpoles. The tadpoles wasn't part of the plan. SOB. <laughs> All right. I want to say it. <laughs> so I was going to get it to them, but I love it when it comes up before I can bring it up. So tadpoles have been a real pain the last couple of years. Our first year, they weren't 
weren't really that much of an issue. However, uh, this past year and the year beforehand, they were a real pain in the butt. Um, I, the very first year that we had them, they weren't in too many ponds, but I was so worried about them. Like I was in there for the next two, three days, catching as many tadpoles as I possibly could, thinking that they were going to eat uh, the baby shrimp and stuff like that. Um, but one of the things that kind of did this week, since I spent a lot of time outside uh, feeding our fish and turtles and, and the shrimp, uh, I kind of been doing some observing with the tadpoles and the shrimp, uh, especially like our black rose pond has a ton of babies on the sides. And so it has a bunch of tadpoles in it too. It's the closest pond to the door of the greenhouse. I know the door isn't properly sealed, but like I've, I've given up on trying to keep the frogs out. No matter what I do, they're going to find their way in. They can squeeze down to like a few millimeters and get through any crack climb underneath any little wedge or anything like that. So um, they're super hard to keep out in the first place. I, I keep wanting to go like a stream without having to mention my ankle. Like I, I want to like not have to blame anything on it anymore, but it's like, <laughs> what, what was I supposed to do all winter? Well, everything that I wanted to do while I couldn't. And one of the things was I was going to go through and try to really uh, frog proof the greenhouse. I was going to make a better uh, airtight uh, door. I was going to go through, add rock around the entire base to make it harder for the frogs to kind of dig under. There are a couple holes in the plastic of the greenhouse, but I'm not really worried about them because we have like two or three layers of screen or shade pla uh, shade material over the holes. So no dragonfly larva or dragonflies can get in there. And our main reason for the greenhouse protection and covering is for the dragonflies. Like those are predator number one, enemy number one in the household. Like Layla loves them, but Jaden's like, no, they're going to eat shrimp. Like he knows, she knows she's aware, but like Jaden's like, I got a dragonfly in the house the other day, dad. And I was so proud of the kid. I was like, you know what you're doing, boy, you're going to go far. So uh, the, the frogs just, they, they're so resilient and, and they're so pampered. They're like little bougie things because they'll they'll go into my nets and use them as hammocks and like they're annoying they they really are but back to my observe observations um the tadpoles really don't even go after any of the baby uh shrimp i mean i'm watching the smallest littlest tiniest baby shrimp probably born within the last few days and they're right next to the tadpoles and what the tadpoles kind of do is they kind of like swim peck at the wall swim peck at the wall and they're just eating the algae. And uh, another thing that I've been doing is like extra, extra food for the, the ponds. Like before I would feed maybe 20 pellets of shrimp food to the tubs. Now I'm feeding like 30 to 40 just to make sure that they're not competing for any food. And I do notice that the snail populations really take a toll. So I do think the tadpoles are uh, eating the snails or they're eating all of the food that the snails would eat. So but I don't think it's harming the population of the, the shrimp at all. That was a long answer. <laughs> uh, it was on the list, so it was, it was great. Leo said, it's a hard choice between the Shadow Missouri or Blue Bolt. And want to order some guppy grass or moss if you got any. All right, so you can do Shadow Missouri and Blue Bolt. Like our Blue Bolts will throw maybe one Shadow Missouri and I don't know, 200 babies it's very very uncommon but no matter what we do we can't breed it out of it in fact when we had hurricane irma come through it wiped out all of our uh stock except for one missoura and then one tiny teeny tiny baby survived and grew up like two months later and out of those two shrimp i was able to rebuild both my missoura colony and my blue bolt colony. But like the Missouras, like 50% of the babies will come out blue bolt. So if you can't decide, you want to go with blue, both of them, you, you can keep both of them in the same tank. You can even throw in some shadow pandas in there and you're really only going to get black and blue shrimp. Maybe one rare red one. But. And I guess that he's from Melbourne, Australia. That was close, New Zealand. Are they close? I mean... <laughs> They're like the closest two colonies to one another. Terrible. That. Temperature is at 75. Is that why the KH and GH for Tiger then? Sorry. 
Yeah, I would bring your temperature down. 75 is at the temperature where I start to see tigers get the bacterial infection. When when we had that hurricane come through, our house got to 84 degree temperature. Our tanks got to 80. And because of that reason, we had 155 tanks at the time. We had issues in five or six. Three of those tanks were tigers. Red tigers, Aurora blue tigers, and uh, the Stardust. So the, the, those three shrimp took the, the biggest hits. And then, of course, the blue bulls. But I think they're asking what is the KH and GH for tigers. Oh, okay. Well, uh, the tigers are super, super hardy. I think that's why I, I put it to the back. It's just, it doesn't really matter. A lot of people would breed them in the Caradina parameters with G, zero KH, but at least like five GH. And then other people will breed them in neocaridina parameters with like two, three KH and then five to seven GH. They're very hardy on the, the parameter wise. David asked, any experiments, experience, experience. I'm going to have to go to bed. With Fritz Turbo Start 700, I'm doing water changes tonight and having the stream on the top of the tank. Red galaxies are looking awesome and lively. Definitely my favorite. So that's oh. a yes. Um, back. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, they were they were very. Uh, usually, Shelby will catch all of the the shrimp for her specific tanks, and uh, I think the last time when you had to catch shrimp for Alan, even though they were low grades, they were still hurting. So she's like, "I need you to do it. I just can't do it this time." And they were medium grade, and I, I definitely don't like to disappoint people. So you know, I, I will go through and I will get you exactly what grade I'm gonna say and. Uh, Probably would have hurt her feelings to see mm -hmm. some of them in the cup. So. I'd be like, no, put it back. No, put it back. <laughs> but we, we have zero experience with any Fritz product except for the dechlorinator. We used that at the Aquaticon for our tank. Uh, they came in clutch. They were the only ones in the building that had it. So, uh, but I, I've just never used them. Um, nothing on the, the Fritz brand. Do we just never come across it or, or anything like that? We've been using Brightwell for so long. Um, we, I have like three two liter bottles of Brightwell bacteria. So I don't see myself buying any bacterial any bacteria anytime soon. I said the same thing, Jamie. So you need to get some cats to kill the frogs. No. Super. Only wild cats in Florida will kill animals, but I don't think our cats ever killed the frogs. We did have a dog that ate the frogs. Yep. She helped a little bit, but man, like, there is no Why is your breath that. so fishy, Pearl? <laughs> Where are you getting the fish? And then one day I'm outside and she's just chewing on a frog. Like, <laughs> Pearl! And that's why her breath smelled like fish. <laughs> Best dog oh, ever. The nastiest smell though ever. I had to cut down a tree that was like leaned over onto a lake and all of the bark, like eight foot by four foot of bark that covered this tree fell off with the first axe swing. And it was like tons and thousands of frogs. And what happened were like the first frogs made their way in, but then couldn't get out because the other frogs came in behind. So there was like layer, it's like the dead baby in a closet joke, but with frogs. It's worse than one. Yeah, I'm not gonna get in there. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Sometimes I need to censor you. <laughs> it's live. There's no censorship. Jeff said, "Do you have anything not listed available for members? I have a cart fairly filled up, looking for a few more to add." There's Malala shrimp. Aquatic isopods, Malaysian trumpet snails. We have Java ferns, narrow and normal Java fern. Um, the guppy. Oh, somebody asked for guppy grass, and I totally ignored it. I'm sorry. Back to the guppy grass part of the other question. Uh, the guppy grass isn't on the website because it's got scuds in it. So anybody that we sell it to, I have to make sure that they're not putting it into a shrimp tank. So like when we go to the shows and everything, I'm like for a fish tank. Like if you want something for the shrimp to hang out in, let's do some moss or something like that. We got tons and tons of moss on the website. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the guppy grass, until I can get it going in like one of the shrimp tubs outside right now, it's just at one of our fish ponds and there are scuds in it. So I don't want to have it on the website since we are like a shrimp website. So, um, but if you want guppy grass and you don't care about the scuds, let us know. We'll, we'll hook you guys up. But, um, 
Shelby does have some lower grade Galaxy Pintos. I don't think she'll let me sell any more mediums. Um, I think that's it for shrimp wise. Yeah, I want to split one of the tanks. That's the only reason we're not selling some of them. And yeah, because those will be a special tank for you to take out of. I the, name my shrimp, okay? I do. <laughs> the The new rack is done though. That uh, we got the substrate Wednesday last week. I set it up, I think, on Thursday. So 100 tanks on the wall. They are all flooded. Uh, most of them are already cycled. There's just like the top row. So 12 tanks right now that aren't cycled. Tomorrow is water change day on the new rack. I will be going through doing a water change on everything. And then as I get the water changes done, I'm going to be going through and just basically raiding the house. I had like 22 tanks in the bedroom alone that I wanted to go through and basically split the colonies up, throw them onto the new rack. Like we breed as many shadow pandas as we possibly can, as many blue bolts as we possibly can, and it's just never enough. So those are both getting new tanks, and then there's a couple other things that just need to be separated so we can uh, breed them out a little bit nicer, better quality, different grades, and stuff like that. And welcome to the stream, Skull. How's it going? And Tim, I don't know if I said hello earlier. How are you doing, Tim? miss anyone i'm really famous for that and richard said i live in southwest florida and we have the cuban tree frogs here i've started using metal mesh on a wood frame to keep them out of my ponds yeah i'm just not about to do that for all like 70 of the ponds that we have out back and if they're only in like three or four of the ponds, it wouldn't be that much of an issue. And another thing I wanted to do was I wanted to set up like a bunch of like honeymoon tubs, like right outside of the greenhouse that just scream for the frogs, like use these, don't go into the greenhouse where it's hard and like lots of water flow. Like I wanted something that I think the frogs would enjoy more, like right by the door. Um, and then like the crazy thing is, there's like three or four tubs in the greenhouse that are, um, tad pulled up and then there's only two outside of the greenhouse so but those I are covered a little bit more pond, little i think well they are in the hot tub and they yeah. keep overflowing and they have definitely turned into food for for the koi fish and as i catch all the tadpoles i'll get a big handful of them and i just throw them straight for the koi's and turtles yeah and they eat our native green oh, in the turtle well pond in the one. greenhouse dang that's now what i was saying i get i get what you're saying cool. oh. bless you <laughs> And they eat the native green frogs. Yes. That's why we don't like them. They're so it's one of those things where, like, I got friends that hate the fact that I get rid of the Cuban tree frogs. But it's like that Cuban tree frog is going to do so much more damage to our, our native wildlife that if I don't get rid of it, it's going to kill more frogs than it's it's going to be able to. Uh, I don't know. In the chain down, it's going to have babies and make it's just it's an onslaught. Yeah, it's kind of comparing it to the uh, lionfish, how it is destroying our reefs, and it's the frogs here destroying our And they, they, they just breed by the thousands. They're everywhere. Grant, how are those orange crush neos? Hello, Mikey. I don't know if we said hello to you. And how do you deal with the tadpoles outside, and do they negatively affect you? So... Mike, we're going to have to change the name of the Orange Crush Neos because I think I think that we're going to get sued for copyright, kind of like the uh, Gorilla Glue incident. So maybe like Orange Soda or, or, or something like that. But um, I have a buried one or two buried ones. I can't remember, um, but they, they are doing well. Haven't, haven't had any losses or anything like that. And they are in the tank right by the the door to our bedroom so i see them You're really a aggressive lot. with your hand motions but um yeah i think we just went through the tap i just live with them and when they get big enough that i can catch them in the net uh, as i'm going through and catching orders i'll just take them throw them in a separate cup and then dump them into the koi pond for food for them and richard asked do you sell studs? I did not think someone would ask us this. No, we, we could. I, I mean, <laughs> so. my issue is, is it'd be so hard for us to get scuds because they're in our fish ponds and the population of the scuds are really, really low until like the winter comes and then all of the fish get moved inside. And then we, uh, you can just go through and uh, play that over me. Um, but 
the scuds repopulate over the winter like crazy. So maybe set up a tank for scuds, but if you wanted like a hundred scuds off of me right now, I'd I'd have like three hours of really aggravated time trying to get those for you. So no scuds right now. If you wanted some scuds, I'll sell you some guppy grass. Comes with free scuds. Have at it. Thanks for becoming a member, Thomas. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Sorry, it was right during the scud talk, but. <laughs> Sorry, I lost my spot now. <laughs> I think you went too far. I know, I did. It was right here. And then uh, the other thing, I guess we'll just go on the list until Shelby finds, is uh, we did get some new shrimp this week. We got uh, 23 Super Crystal Blacks. They were split into two bags, so I did uh, separate those into two different groups on the new rack. We do have Super Crystal Blacks already from Eddie, but uh, he's had them for a while, and his line and my line came from the same people. So I thought maybe mixing some uh, new blood together would, would be really uh, – would good be good for the old line and then um it's just one of those things where like some people say adding new blood will increase breeding but like i've got the same exact safari line which i started from four shrimp that we started six years ago and they outbreed any caradina in the house besides the tangerine tigers and yellow They're king hogs <laughs> so and like we almost completely lost like we had six tanks of booming uh safaris and then when the um we had the issue with the flea meds our best tank got wiped in half and then the other tanks just went stagnant for the longest time and now we've got probably 10 tanks of them just booming ridiculously amount and we haven't added any new blood for those in six years seven years maybe Scotty the fish freak says killing fish like scuds. I didn't know that. Scuds, whatever you want to say. And then Gary has a scud tank just for the pea puffers. Don't feed shrimp to pea puffers. Mm. Hmm. Maybe we're gonna have to have a scud tank or a scud little. Uh, I could do a barrel and just throw all of our dead decaying plants in there. They would love that. Maybe. I think we have some in this pond right here, but. No, but I've been throwing baby swords in there. So oh been, yeah, yeah. they're munching on them. So mm, so we do we do have some baby red swords um, that we got at the last club meeting, and then we also got uh, baby uh, polar blue parrot cichlids. Uh, so my buddy cute. Eddie, if you haven't seen the the videos from, and I feel bad, we should go to Eddie's house in the next two days or so. And, and get that we've been so busy haven't even been able to go to eddie's house to do the next video in his series um but uh he's over at the house he's like hey man you got babies over here i'm like oh no the parrot blues they're they're just they're still small and he's like no nah, like i understand that one's small but that one's definitely a baby and i looked over there and sure enough yeah there's and they're so cute as babies like how are they that adorable yeah this doesn't make sense to me but some babies going outside. The, sh the fish are breathing strong. If you watch my TikTok, it's uh, in the, the most recent video of him holding one of the baby fish. Oh, um, you mean holding the baby koi fish? No. Oh, the okay. I remember now. I remember. Um, I don't watch your TikTok. I got. He, <laughs> I gotta watch more. He of my always videos. just likes it and it just goes away. No, I didn't um, even see it today. You liked it. It's in the Stranger Things one on to your butt muchacho it's oh. in there you just didn't watch the whole thing then oh uh, that's okay it only hurts my feelings but anyways we do have the the new video is pieced together so hopefully that'll come out in the next couple you days pieced it all together yeah you have to do the voiceover now i thought you were still waiting to get the rest of it off my phone like three videos all right well yeah i'll do the voiceover tomorrow i'll get that done <laughs> and hello mountain greenery And, oh, wow, that's so weird that it does that. And hello, Lonnie. This is hope you're doing well. We are. I'm a little sunburnt. Grant's a little stiff from uh, golf, but 
Oh, no, I'm feeling much better after golf than I was going into it. I had a very stiff neck yesterday, and I woke up this morning going, I'm going to have to back out of golf today. Oh, no. And then I just heard my buddy's buddy's <laughs> voice in my head calling me a, a wimp. So I was like, all right, I got to get going. We'll get in there. Wimp was a nice word. <laughs> Sandy said, "Wow, that frog story is enough to keep to want uh, enough." I can't wow, read. that frog story is enough to leave me with nightmares. I think that's what she meant to say. I get it. I get it. I, I usually can fill in the blanks if something happens. And Gary says, "I feed my spits green beans." We we need to do a pond where we just do snails and one for just scuds. Now it seems. I'm also going to do a Daphne tub because I talked with somebody and I think I could do Daphne all year round. And I thought my Daphne would die every winter. And if they can keep Daphne up north all year round, we should be able to do it down here. So. So big dog said, I believe this is, can you feed dead shrimp to axolotls? Yeah. So probably my best friend in the entire household is Jaden's ax or Jaden's flower horn. <laughs> Uh, our dead shrimp usually will end up in the in the flower horn tank, but it, if it wasn't the flower horn, it'd be the axolotls. Yeah, I don't know what the axolotls. They have to be moving usually. Once no, you just them, drop it in front of its face. They'll go for yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. They do like the worms, though. So. You all right? That was a really long sigh. <laughs> Exhausted. Uh, Nano Aquarium guy said, how's the half shrimp from the TikTok video doing? I gave him his own penthouse and he didn't like it. <laughs> so, yeah, not that good. We didn't have very high expectations of the guy anyways. Um, yeah. He, I mean, sad to say he's no longer with us, but gave me a shock and uh, I didn't think it was possible, but I guess anything's possible if you just roll the dice. All right. Well, we're caught up in chat. We'll go next. We'll go on to uh, some better news. No more tragedies with the uh, frogs. How about let's send some shrimp to outer space? I didn't think you were bringing this up. Oh, I wanted to bring it up. I was down to make it the entire Frog. stream yes. for tonight. Was just talking about sending shrimp to outer space. And yes, I'm serious about it. And can I just tell you, like, when I told my kids about it, they were like, you're lying, and they were not as hyped as they should have been, and it was very upsetting, and they're like, you're lying, it's fake. They, they just went off and said, space is fake, it's all fake, and I'm just going, I'm, I'm seriously sending some shrimp to outer space, guys. So I will uh, give you the whole feedback story. Somebody made a post on one of the USA shrimp groups saying, hey, uh, we are from Poland, we have the Polish power, and uh, we just don't have the permission to bring our shrimp from Poland to the United States. I believe they're launching the rocket out of Arizona, and um, what they're basically doing is they're taking the Neocaridina shrimp, and they put them to sleep, and they're going to send them out into outer space, send them into orbit, and then they're going to return the rocket somehow collect the shrimp and see how they, they fare during the, the expedition. Uh, there'll be a camera on the rocket to view the payload as it's uh, traveling. So um, I'm not sure if like, we're going to be able to see the shrimp when they wake up or how the whole process is going to be like, do they wake the shrimp up in space to see if they survive? Or are they going to fly to space, fly back, and then they wake them up? I don't know how the whole process is going to take care of take place but i was like you guys should take juveniles and they're like no we don't want juveniles we need adults because they survived the anesthesia better so i just figured the juveniles would survive the trip and they could even survive without you know having to put them asleep um but they said when they go through that much g-forces they have that much gravity on them that they go through so much stress that uh some of the reproduction organ reproductive organs and stuff like that uh, go through so much toll that they're not able to breed afterwards. And the whole purpose of this uh, rocket mission in the first place is to send honeybees and shrimp to outer space so that they can work with pollinators to do their hydroponic systems on Mars, or on the moon, 
uh, for these colonies that are going up in space. Um, they said simply that, you know, plant seeds and hydroponic system with fertilizers was not going to be enough to grow uh, self-sustaining ecosystems with plants that are going to be able to feed entire human colonies out there. So uh, Neocaridina is going to be one of the big players with the the mission to Mars. Like who knew Elon Musk might be like hitting me up one day and saying, hey, man, I need you. And you, we're going to put you up on the, the first rocket to Mars, you and your family. Like, I think I just saw we're something the other day where there's like, he's sent, making enough rockets to send like 2 million people up in this, up to Mars or something like that. So who knows the Eater family, we could be, you know, first tickets all over, making sure that the uh, the shrimp are doing their thing. So Gonna gonna make sure I stay Just on top way up. <laughs> on top of being the uh, the top Neo Caradina mm -hmm. guy, you know. So, uh, oh just gosh. very exciting. If, if you're not excited, uh, I'm sorry, but yeah, the shrimp are coming coming out of their scene into bigger things. Who knew? They're gonna save the entire human race one day. So, be pretty cool. I hope so. Look at me now, mom. She ain't watching. I know. <laughs> oh man and if she is i'm so sorry <laughs> oh, and lonnie said i just got some of the shrimp in be complete you will definitely like that it's my favorite hopefully it'll be on our website uh in the next coming weeks because you know what i did the the leg work you're supposed to do the rest I well, no 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 what is it i did the main work you're supposed to do the leg work i know but i've been doing so many water changes that i'm so scared to flood we got so many pumps going at the same time i'm worried if i get and he asked for another it. one he asked yeah. for another pump of he's course. got two floods all the time more risk but way like more a, reward i no. need to save every minute i can no, he so wants i can like make four days tanks. a week that he can go play golf that's what it is it's not saving you know time for more tanks it's it's, just more it's, golf I should be able to play golf in the morning, come home and do all my water changes at the end of the day. Get that first tea time of the day. I'm home in three hours. I told him he could have another pump when he buys us a new house and he has a warehouse that can flood, not a normal house that cannot flood. She doesn't know there's already a pump in the house. I just need a hose. And you get that from my work. So. Last hose came from Home Depot. No, it, it did. Do you have braided hose at West Marine? Yes. All right, well, I bought it at Home Depot, sorry. What are some snails that are good for caridina tanks besides rams and trump trumpet snails? I mean, I guess you could do pond snails, but why? Uh, rams are like the only pretty ones. Uh, trumpet snails are gonna be your hardest workers. So the lymphids and the other things and stuff like that, I just wanna add them to your tanks. Um, the, the mystery snails, they, they'd be all right, but they're they're not going to like the acidity of your water. And then she says, did you just say your kids said space was fake? They, they said that the mission was fake, that I was lying, oh. that, yeah. I was about to say, we were talking about it today, and they were naming what they were. So Jaden Saturn, because he likes the rings, and then Layla, <laughs> Layla's Mars, because Jaden said that she was Pluto. She was like, that's not fair. I don't like the cold. So I was like, well, you could be Mercury or Mars. And she just said Mars. So, <laughs> but anyways. I was always Neptune. No. Uh, technically, they didn't make us planets. I'm the sun, you're the moon. Oh. Yeah, and then they're planets for some reason. <laughs> Mikey said, yes, send them to space. NASA sent baby squids. And then Spaghetti said, shrimp to infinity and beyond. <laughs> and then Nano said, got to aquascape in space. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. Do a zero gravity aquascape. That'd be pretty cool. A little, little avatar thing going on for sure. Moni said, yeah, the shrimps seek it out. Same with the food fight sample. Thinking of that next. If you're in outer space and you like throw a boomerang, oh my goodness, will it just circle? <laughs> no, it will just go and be gone forever. 
feel like it would circle until it caught in like some gravitational pull and then be dragged that way. New meaning to red and black galaxy caradinas. They don't want any caradinas. I was like, hey, we can send them some some tiger shrimp. That I think those would be all right too. Uh, no, but they were interested in the aquatic isopods. Um, I, I really want to like emphasize on having the the best biodiversity that you can without there being predation. So the seed shrimp, the I mean, they're probably going to get seed shrimp in outer space whether they want them or not. Like those things are everywhere. I wouldn't be surprised if they just made their way in. Um, but yeah, you're going to want those. You the the, the, the the Wow, that was a stutter and a half. The detritus worms, and then uh, I think the aquatic. The aquatic isopods are, are great. Mm -hmm. and, oh, hello, Jeffrey Brown. Welcome. How's it going, man? And hello, Jess. Mains, tails, furs, and fins. That's a good one. And then GK Aquatics uh, said, I just drilled the 24th tank on one drill bit. The bit is just about done, but cheap bits only get you seven or eight tanks. Never drill the tank. I'm too scared. <laughs> I don't want to plumb everything together and then shrimp from this tank are now in all the other tanks. So they all stay separate. Lefty is going to bed. Have a group. Take a group of fifth graders to a middle school tomorrow. Oh, this is fun. Have a good day. Have a good night. Night, Lefty. And Jamie said, send green jades. They might breed true finally in space. So, because they want adults and they don't care about grade, I was thinking about doing the green jades actually because the the culls at when I moved them inside, there's quite a few adult culls. If I don't do the green jades, I might just go for uh, the wilds. We got a wild tub outside, which uh, those are going to be the most hardiest shrimp, anyways. So, probably do them justice and give them the wilds. That'd be the best pet. All right, next thing on the list caught up in chat we're gonna go over uh the uh, american shrimp contest in dallas august 7th august six and seven six and seven maybe so, i'm gonna double check that because that sounds like last year yeah well <laughs> it is in dallas and uh we are going to be able to host over 50 tanks this time so last time we maxed out at 50 entries and uh, we had some entries that got turned around because they uh, we filled out. So this time we're going for our, up to 100 tanks. I doubt we're going to fill that many. If we did 55 to 60 tanks, I'd be happy with that. But there are several people who said that they were not going to be ready uh, for Florida, but they were going to be ready for Dallas for sure. And, you know, there really wasn't too much competition uh, across the board in Orlando like there was one person who entered like six or seven groups in a couple different categories but there really wasn't somebody who went for all six categories two groups of each or anything like that so if somebody were to do that for Dallas and then do that for Chicago they could technically still jump in uh, these last two shows and get breed of the year uh, you can only enter two groups per category so some of the other categories might be a little bit hard to to jump on that, but you know it, it's definitely still possible to win some Any of the breeder of the year. year You're awards. gonna get some points, so. And then uh, we will be doing uh, awards for those as well. Uh, we do have JBJ and Shrimp King sponsoring this one, uh, so we don't have all the fine details of uh, first, second, and third place awards, but we are working on something for this show, and then. Um, we're also going to be having a booth for Aquashella um, for Dallas. We will not do one for um, Chicago. Chicago, though, because we are doing the Aquascape contest. And we're still on the fence if we're going to do an Aquascape in Dallas or not. So, what are we allowed? Yeah, we are, we are allowed. I just don't know if we're going to want to do that much again for one ship. The Aquascaping and the booth. Would it just be us? It would just be us, yeah. So I, it would all depend on if we have some local help mm. that would volunteer to watch the booth for us while we all just, I could hook what you up with doing, some free shrimp. Is Ruben in here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> but, Ruben can watch the table. That would be, I would trust Ruben at the table. 
but it's it's only twenty five dollars to enter into the shrimp contest. You can enter up to twelve different groups in the across the six categories. You want to enter three to five shrimp. Enter your biggest shrimp that you possibly can that all look identical, and you're gonna do good. The, the the points have been left on the board in all the categories. Nobody's gotten a perfect score, so there's still room to work. Uh, you are kind of running out of time, so if you're thinking, "Oh, I just had babies born like a couple weeks ago," uh, those are not going to be competition ready. Uh, for them to be competition ready, they would have had to been born in like February, uh, if not January or or sooner. So, um, but you know, there's a couple categories like the orange eye that there, there's competition isn't that high, so uh, you could get lucky with entering some small ones and still get some some points on the board, but. Uh, $25, you can enter one group, and that gets you into the uh, whole show of Aquashella VIP access for both days, and that's going to be your cheapest way into the show. So even if you just have some run-of-the-mill Neo Caradinas, you want to enter those in, you're more than welcome to. Uh, there's room for everybody. But I want to stress, this is a beginner's contest. This isn't the international contest. You're not going to be competing against Carbon or Vin or any of the German breeders or anything like that. Myself and Eric don't compete. Eric will be a judge. And uh, we, me and Shelby, we organize it alongside with Flip Aquatics. So uh, we cannot compete in it either. So it is really just American breeders, a lot of beginners. And, uh, you know, we've had some people like Gary, uh, GK Aquatics, who's in chat, just enter some for the free ticket. And he ended up winning an award. He, didn't, he wasn't there Sunday to claim the prize, but... It was really cool to jump into the next uh, meeting that we had for our aquatic club and kind of jump up there and, and during the intro and announce that he won. Very surprised. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you never know. Um, but there, are, there is some real steep competition. Like in the Orange Eye group, that is Ruben's group. He enters in two groups into that category. So you're going to have to enter in some big ones to take in first or second, but third place might be yours. Don't be scared. It's all for fun. And, and even if you don't win, you should know that the amount of kids, the amount of people from all, all different walks of life get to see these shrimp on display. First of all, just naturally a crowd starts to build around all of the tanks because we have 50 plus little tiny UNS, but this time we'll be um the uh, uh shrimp king denarily tanks but they're all uniform they all look really well with a little tiny shrimp in it and you know you got all the reef people who are like oh these are salt water i haven't seen these ones can i get the and they're like no these are fresh water and they're like oh really i didn't have to spend you know all this money on a tank to get this kind of color so you know it is really really good for the hobby i would say every show we get four or five people who uh, get our card and then message us saying, hey, we're at the show. What do we need? And we help them walk them through and we get new people into the hobby. And uh, that's that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Can't wait till the time where we can sell tanks at the, the booth. That would be so cool. Well, I can't, I can't wait till next year Orlando show where the kid that I gave him the free shrimp comes back and enters in the conference. Oh, that's so cool. So Tim said, what time are you talking in Pittsburgh on June 24th? I couldn't find a time. I don't know. I need to, I need to figure that all out. It would be whatever um, the club meets at usually. I, I need to message the guy and ask him for the flyer that he sent out to his club. And then I'll, I'll post that on my social medias. I'll, I'll make sure it goes out on YouTube too. We Do need you live to use, near Pittsburgh? That's cool. Even if he doesn't, there's like, I don't know, a couple states within a three-hour drive of there that would – probably be worth dri driving down to if we drive three hours to go to some of our clubs other people are probably taking a too. couple of days off for this so we're making a little trip out of it and, and we are going to meet josh on the way up for dinner hey he's doing good so will you be entering any shrimp sorry scotty the fresh creek said asked if You'll be entering any shrimp or anything into the Keystone Flash Fish Show. Will Shelby be entering into the aquascaping con competition too? All right. I didn't know there was going to be a shrimp show at the Keystone it's not Flash. A shrimp. It's a fish show. Well, I mean, but you could probably enter your shrimp somewhere. There's probably a shrimp category or an invert category or something like that. Um, so if there is, then yes, for sure, I will. I will enter my shrimp. 
Um, I know you're uh, very good with emails and communication. If you could please send me a link, I will definitely look into those. And it was still uh, on the fence about Shelby doing the aquascape or not. I wanted to. I just didn't know if I was allowed to. No, I think we got a permission. Uh, I think you were sleeping you and I forgot to go me. back. I think so. I'm sorry. Thanks. He doesn't want the competition is what it is. <laughs> As long as I can let her go first, so I know how, how high I have to step it up. No. No. And hello for joining us, Sweet Shot. And yes, that's right. Jess won in Dallas last year. You won with orange shrimp. And those orange shrimp, I think, were auctioned off to Mike. And Mike has no, now... No, you didn't auction... they weren't auctioned off. He reached out to her oh, and got okay. shrimp off got of him, bred them out, and now we have them from Mike. We yeah. just got those last week. I wanted your shrimp so bad, and I wanted them to get first place, and you got second, and it's still killing me. I think that orange shrimp should always get first place if they are big and colorful because orange are more difficult to breed than anything they else. So the difficulty level should have brought you up above everyone else's so they, they should have won but they're 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 gorgeous beautiful you're not gonna agree with the judge's decision every time usually right. i can pick out the winners but i was wrong there yeah there's a good competition that time too is there any neotype that is transparent without any pigments no balls yeah the, the snowball neocaridina they've got and then Sweet Shot There's answered some. it. Um, they oh. got the name because when they're buried, the eggs will actually look white. But uh, besides the eggs or the saddle, which is just eggs that are unfertilized, they really don't have any color to them at all. <laughs> Sandy says, oh, come on. Shrimp in space. I'm picturing shrimp with a little helmet. I wanted, I wanted Shelby to do up like a really cool thumbnail for, for the talk. Oh, well, I didn't think we were talking about it. this tonight. Oh, it would have been cool. As soon as we sign the dotted line and everything's 100% in stone, I will we'll, we'll do that talk. But I didn't want to jinx it by making it the whole stream or anything like that. As of right now, I, I'm signed on to send shrimp to space, so I'm sticking to it. So Fish and Wall, hello, how are you doing? Um, said, I'm in Erie, Pennsylvania. Is that Pennsylvania? Yeah. Two hours north. Take the kids to Presque Isle. I wonder what that is. Shall we look, look it up? up. Mm -hmm. um, we no really don't have any plans when we're there. I don't think we're going to arrive into Pittsburgh until like late Friday night. And then early Saturday, we're going to the zoo aquarium. Um, hopefully get behind the scene tour of that. I, I need to double check on that. If not, I'm not picky. I, I love seeing the zoo one way or the other. And it's a zoo I've never been to before. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And then we're doing the talk, and then we'll probably leave home Sunday morning because we have uh, some stops I want to make before we uh, head back to Florida. Or uh, we might stop at LRB's house on the way home. So it's seven miles of beaches is what he says. But it looks to me like a haunted uh, light tower. <laughs> That's all I'm bringing up is it looks like oh, the haunted. Um... That's the state park. So Yeah, it's so cool, though. It's beautiful. That would be cool. I don't it's know. All, two hours. All long. species fish. Ooh. How would shrimp compare if you put it next to my Achilles fish, though? I might even have some. Um, <laughs> is it a single shrimp in the show, or is it like a group? How how would that work? We'll have to read about if it's it. It's a single shrimp that changes everything. <laughs> Said, yes, please. And he says, we will put you on opposite sides of the area. <laughs> might have to because I might just, you know, not just take a little bit right before. <laughs> I can't touch it no more. I'm just kidding. I'm she not... sabotages all the time. <laughs> no, She's not kidding. I don't. I don't. Oops. I didn't know. <laughs> Famous words. Famous words. Stop. <laughs> WB said, I might be down for the shrimp contest. Can you email or post the link? I forgot everything you just said. It is at aquashella.com. And then you're going to have to go on to the Dallas tab. I'm sorry. We didn't set up the website. 
it is super, super complicated. If you have pop-up blockers on, it's not going to work. So you got to make sure you turn Do off the pop-up the blocker. And uh, yeah, you got to go into the Dallas section and then you scroll all the way down, way down past the speakers and, and the YouTube creators and stuff like that. And then you'll see a little section that says contest. Click on that. You'll see the shrimp and the flower horn. And uh, of course, click on the shrimp. It'll bring up a pop-up tab for you to fill out. It is, and, and if you have troubles uh, walking through it, you can go to our how to sign up for the Orlando Shrimp Show, and basically Shelby walks you through it. It's the exact same thing, just Dallas instead of Orlando. Yep, it goes straight through. Oh, Jeffrey Brown said, "Need shrimp in space shirts." Oh. <laughs> So this is funnier because everyone keeps going with it. <laughs> so Nano says, oh, my God, yes, the I sent shrimp to space and all I got is this T-shirt. <laughs> oh, then, man. So we're trying to get the logo on on the rock, our logo on the on the rocket. We, we were told we could get it on the payload, but like the payloads like inside. I don't know how that's going to work out. But if I can just get footage of the shrimp in space for our YouTube videos, that that would be cool enough for me. I see a price inflation coming. This is the line of shrimp that survived in space. <laughs> Man, now, now I want to send like the purples or something. Just real cool. Give them, give them some extra boozy, quet, bougie quet. Oh, man, I can't talk about that. No, you need to love that word today. And Scotty Fish Freak said, fish and wall coming to Key Keystone Clash, Mor Morgantown, Pennsylvania. 49 classes. What? Okay. Oh, uh, Keystone Clash. Okay. <laughs> so the the fish wall <laughs> is going to be like long, a wall yeah. of different. Uh, like no, what fish and wall is one of the people in here. <laughs> oh, okay. No, uh, I didn't get the whole sentence here. We'll get here. Okay. Too much sun for us up. today. If you can't tell from Shelby, I I <laughs> was I didn't bad. get too much sun today, but I was definitely in the heat way longer than I should have. Oh my gosh, it looks crazy on the camera. And poor kids are just as bad. Oh man, they're really bad. <laughs> I put sunscreen on them three times today. Nice mineral sunscreen that was turning them purple because it doesn't like soak in. It just like sits on the skin, and it it they still got burnt, but they didn't want to leave. That was them, not my fault. And said uh, Richard said you have purples. So I have a few purples, and uh, we got our purples from crossing. Uh, Blue Dream with Bloody Mary. Now, I made that cross nine times, and nine times I got wild. And I was going to give up, but then, I don't know, like two years after giving up, I was like, let's do it again. And this time I got red release with blue bodies, and I got a couple that were looking like super maroon, magenta kind of colored. Um, bred those out and then F2s. I ended up getting some what I call purple rillies. They're purple on the head and tail and then uh, blue center body. So uh, we entered those in the very first uh, American Shrimp Contest in Dallas. I don't get a lot of them. So for that reason, I, I just I don't sell them. I, we show pictures of them every now and then, but uh, no colony shots because there's no colonies. The show has 49 classes, including one for inverts, and Fish and Wall is near the location, but including one for inverts. So, yeah, so the you enter invert. some shrimp, and I'll enter my aquatic isopods. Sure. <laughs> they're interesting. Like you have no idea. They're, they're going to win. You think those are going to beat like a crazy blue with three, four colors on it? Are you going to be bringing a crazy blue? Yeah, sure. That's what it's going to take to beat your We'll isopod. see. No one sees them, so maybe. What do your wild neos mostly look like? Mostly, they come from like whatever we ended up crossing. It was like blue jean, so a lot of our wilds will have like blue stripes to them instead of like the black or brown. But we do get a bunch of them that come out with black or brown stripes. Um, some of them come out with green stripes. So it's just really mix some of them will come out solid black too so uh they're kind of all over the place we don't like line breed any of the wild so uh just what ends up happening is like we have a wild 
tub outside, but it's also the cull pond for our blues. So like it, it ends up being heavy on the blue side, but there's all different colors in there. So Jess asked, have you guys had any that were born with red, white, and blue? I had one, but no more since. Um, so if you had a red, really, that was red, white, and blue, chances are the white was a muscular necrosis issue or a bacterial infection. Uh, they shouldn't have any, any like white, white pigment to them. Um, if, if you're talking caradina though we we've had some red white and blues very rare mm -hmm. and, we'll cut up and, chat again. I didn't know if you were talking about crazy blues or not um so we do have one announcement and we did have some new members today so you guys will be happy to hear shelby did get the stickers done and ordered last week uh we should be getting them on wednesday this week uh, so probably Thursday, Friday, we'll send out some uh, care packages to all the members. We'll have the old OG stickers as well as the member only stickers. And uh, yeah, we're running out of the OG stickers. We're on the very last stack of the ones with the plumerias on. Wow. So I think the less than 500 then. Sorry it's taking so long. I uh, wanted to get them... It was one to of those my where... specific standards, um, I really wanted a specific style that I see all the time and something that's unique and only our members will be getting these stickers. So, And we, we wanted to get them through Jaden, Jaden Aquatics, but he doesn't do the specific things that Shelby wanted. So Sorry. We, we weren't able to get them through him, but I do want to get some of the new logo made from him in mm -hmm. different sizes so we can just give those out at shows and, yep, and, and into orders. But I figured we'd wait until we run out of like a stack of the uh, other stickers first because three stickers is enough options right now. I thought we were, okay. I thought we were like out. And no. just said, sorry, was clear, not white. So maybe maybe clear red on on the head and then like a little tint of blue on the tail, but that that's really uncommon. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. We've had so the, the thing with the reallys is they they throw the most colds. No matter what line of reallys you get, uh, they're going to throw red reallys. Then the opposite of red really, where the the color is in the middle and then clear on the head and tail. You're going to have splotches in between stripes. You're going to have mixed matches of all colors. You're going to have solid of both colors. And, and for that reason, it's just they're all over the place. Um, the red riding hoods that came out like two, three years ago, the, that's just somebody that went through the red really pond and called out all the Missouras and then named them something else and charged the Americans an extra dollar for them. So it's like. Uh, the, the reallys are all over the place there. And if you wanted to work on something out of them, it, the genetics are like a stack of cards. They're so scattered. It's just a really hard line to work with. I'm, um, I actually forgot to tell you when I was catching the green jades today, you have a very unique looking blue shrimp in there. It is no pigment on the head and bright blue on the body. Where? In the green jades. Oh, yeah, yeah. They've been throwing some weird, there, really weird... There's a weird... bright blue one in there. Yeah, no. When, when I get around to that, that room again, I'll be giving them a designated tank for the for the blues. Yeah, those are cool. You think they're, that's where people are thinking their blue jellies are coming from? Uh, no, the, the green jays just throw blue and yellow balls. It's just the thing. Is it the flower one? Jamie said, I got the Garden of Eater sticker with the pink flowers. Yep, probably won't so be bringing that back. The, the pink flowers were the plumerias. When I first quit my landscaping business, um, we had like 500 plumeria trees and 50 different varieties. And I thought maybe it's something that I, I'd keep going with. But when I sold the landscaping business, the last thing I wanted to do was spend time working outside. I was like, I just retired from that. Why am I going to spend any time outside? In fact, we had most of the IBC totes and tubs for the Neos outside for like four or five years before I ever even put any shrimp in them. Just because I didn't want to be outside working or doing anything along those lines. So 
uh, pulling weeds, trimming, taking care of rust, fungus, and stuff like that. I was like, no need to do that. We, we sold off all of the plumerias that we could, and uh, we kept a couple so Shelby could uh, have some of the flowers. But, uh, yeah, just thought maybe in the beginning when we started the Garden of Eater, I'd do shrimp and some nursery stuff outside. But gingers should not be outside in the Florida heat. And I couldn't keep up with it with, I had quite a bit of jobs at one time. So it was uh, hard to keep up with the plants and just wasn't worth the time. And Jeff asked, are you currently working on any boa or purple metallic lines? Yes, we have three different tanks with boas in it right now. Four tanks with boas. Um, and one of the uh, galaxy tanks that we have does produce a lot of purples. Um, they are not boa quality, but uh, they, they produce such this cool metallic, like black and blue backline that I really like working with them. And then the, the body color is purple. So I've been more focusing on the colors with those rather than pattern. But I think it's easily like I can create a really nice purple metallic boa by crossing one of the boas into that line. And then Sweet Shot asks, do you guys have any Ninja Caradina? They seem pretty cool. No, we do not. Um, I don't remember if the Bavaltis are called the Ninjas or mm -hmm. the Ninjas See. or something else. The Red Nose ones. Oh, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. The, the Red Nose. No, they're uh, more breed only in brack brackish water. And uh, what happens is... Oh, yeah, no. Ceratone Doradus. I don't know how to say that. Uh, no, we've never worked with any of those. I've never seen them available. Uh, yeah. Uh, Homebred oh, okay. or anything like that. No. What are those on Aquatic Arts? Are mm -hmm. they available? No, they're no. sold out. Yeah, I haven't seen them available. I've heard of them. I, I thought when we looked them up last time, they were the Red Nose. Uh, I thought when we talked to Eric, he had some... He was selling. Mm -hmm. And then they said, hey, what are you guys doing in the morning? Shelby will be working. Yeah. And I will be doing water changes. <laughs> the kids are home for the summer. <laughs> yeah. So having a hard time in the mornings doing anything. Um, but if Grant's not busy. I assume it's for the aquatic morning show and I'd love to do it with Shelby. So if you, I can't remember what days you do it on, but if it's on Mondays, maybe we can jump on next week. I think it's Tuesdays. Cause I usually get on it Tuesday morning when I'm at work. I usually get it's on more than just you. Tuesdays. Cause it's like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, third. I think it's every day, but the weekend. Uh, the might. I might, I'm not going to pronounce that. Sorry. What's your opinion on Lava Rocks as filter media? You can't say with Sasson. <laughs> no. I have issues with S's and A's together. All or right. Any word coming out of my mouth, apparently. So we use uh, Lava Rocks as filter media for our ponds outside. Uh, it's not the best option. It is porous. But the amount of surface area that is inside a lava rock is not nearly as much as it is inside the matrix uh, media that Seachem sells or Fluval has their own bio media and stuff like that. Uh, the, the bio rings, the bio homes, the, the media that's sold out on the market, it is designed to have more surface area per square inch than lava rock. Otherwise, everyone would just use lava rock. However, it is it's really cheap and if you, you have an area where you can make a huge grow bed or a huge filter then then lava rock is great but um for little tiny compact hang on the back filters you are better off using like a matrix or something else like that because it does have more areas for the beneficial bacteria to colonize and filter your water and they said oh yeah that sounds they sound hard to breed. Most likely they are if people aren't breeding them. Like they probably like a silhouette, to be honest. No, I believe they're one of the shrimp that just like a monos, they, they, they're freshwater mm -hmm. bred. They go they're out cute. to brackish saltwater where they feed on phytoplankton. 
and then when they grow up they they move up river to breed again so kind of like salmon but this shows you how terrible my phone is because only tuesday morning do i get a notification that you're on um i don't know what is wrong with youtube but i have everyone's notification bell but we do it every monday tuesday thursday and friday and we'll email to you to confirm we do could do it monday mornings as my day off so that would be convenient we usually sleep in so maybe that's why my phone's like trying not to wake me up <laughs> and sandy said grant could be the shrimp keeper up there and breed space shrimplets <laughs> Hey, if, if Elon wants to pay for it, I'm, I'm all for it. As long as I can bring like the entire collection with me, because just breeding Neos is going to get really boring really quickly. Yeah, I don't I don't know how you'd get on a, a rocket and go up there. You know, I wanted to be They would have to put an me astronaut. Asleep. Yeah, right. I wanted to my whole body would probably shut down like it does on a roller coaster. Like, right. I can't do drops. For whatever reason, there's it's been like a long line of history in my family and ancestors that have like fallen off of cliffs or the top of masts on sailboats or or I don't know what it is because I have it, Jaden has it, my dad has it. Where when you go on the drop on the roller coaster, your whole body, every muscle in my whole body flexes, and I stop breathing, and it's like I'm ready for impact. And for whatever reason, we it's you had to have survived, and then it's been passed down. So it's like my body, like, oh, we know what's coming, and then it's like, joke, it's on you. It's just a roller coaster ride, but my body hasn't learned that yet. Yeah, no. So and I don't enjoy them. We just now saw that Jaden has that when we uh, when was that Legoland? We yeah. get on the roller coasters, and Jaden's just panicking and like. He's in, in tears, panicking, like, stop the ride. He's screaming at me, and I'm trying to calm him down. I'm like, Jada, we can't get off the ride, buddy. You're in for the long run. This is, oh, no, Florida State Fair. Sorry. And he's panicking. We get off the ride. He was scared of that one, but we go to Legoland, do it again. And he's like, the whole time, he can't breathe, and he's just, like, stuck to the chair like those videos it's you see people pass now. just during the drop now. on the Jurassic and Park he, ride. <laughs> it was just during the drop. He's it fine is. during the entire other ride, He and did not he like the, the, the Because he thought he was going to fly, fly out of it. Yeah. The horse the one, kid. though, too, is not that bad, and he was crying. But, um, yeah, and then we get off the ride, and he was like, no, I loved it. It was a great ride. I'm like, Jaden, you were in tears. And he's like, oh, no, it's so fun. And he was like, I wasn't scared. You're scared, not me. But anyways, get back to the questions. You guys would freeze because it's not 120 degrees Fahrenheit in space. You're right. Yeah, but they, they leave the AC on. Everything's going to be temperature controlled. So as long as it's like 70, 72, I actually prefer it. like colder inside. So like. If I could keep it's the house at 68, inside. it would be at 68 all year round. I'm already dying at 70, so no thanks. I'm the one who really likes the heat. I sit outside most days, and he's like, I can't sit out there with you. And I'm like, oh, out in 90-degree weather. Like, this is lovely. Uh, do you use tap water for Neo and remineralize RO water for Caradina? Yeah, so... We have 300 tanks inside the house. Our RO unit spits out 200 gallons of RO water per day. And it just would not make sense for me to try and use that for the Neo Caradina ponds when doing a 50% water change on them would use about 80 gallons of water. So I'd only be able to do like two and a half uh, ponds outside a day. And then it would take way too long to mix all the minerals and stuff like that. So. I said, it's got to work with tap water and prime or else I'm not going to be able to do the Neos outside. And it was like live or die, basically sending them out there. And I didn't have to reset any of my colonies. I was getting some of the shrimp in uh, during the wintertime in December. We got some black rose off of uh, Mike Esposito. And by the time it was April, May, I had already sold some of those shrimp. By the end of the year, we had sold like two to 3,000 shrimp out of that one pond in a year's time with like 25 shrimp to start then we're back up on chat. and then we made it really easy for everything inside the house if it was all remineralized uh all at the same uh tds that i could fly through the house and do water changes a little bit faster before 
it was this tank was at 150 and then the next tank might be neo and then the next tank after that might be 110 so uh it was taking me longer to do water changes because of how much the hassle was sometimes i'll be like yeah i'll do it tomorrow but now it's just there's no excuse for me not to fill up the trash cans the day before mix the salt and then the next day i go through and i change out as many water as i can we also have a special trash can for the silhouette now right yeah 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 yeah. sorry <laughs> I, I read something they said and then you said silhouette said i was like what was the first part of what she said so <laughs> and then uh should i message you to buy guppy grass yeah if anybody wants guppy grass or like the uh not scuts the aquatic isopods java ferns or anything that i mentioned on here that's available email us and and we'll get that out to you as long as you have paypal if you don't have PayPal, I can arrange for something like you buy it on the website and just put in the notes. But uh, yeah, Shelby just dropped the email in the in the chat. So or message on Facebook. That's usually a better yeah. Too. I will respond to Facebook a lot quicker. Sometimes I I don't check my emails until nighttime. But, I'm uh, usually the one checking emails. It's uh you know any any question or anything like that if you guys want help working through your tanks or anything like that, reach out to us, email or Facebook. I'd be more than happy to help. And if there's something on your wish list that you guys want, reach out to me. I can give you guys an ETA, uh, especially those members. You guys uh, are going to get your own member code here soon. We need to figure out a way to do that and send it to all of you. And um, we'll also, um, or should we just put the member code on the back of the stickers? I think that's what we'll we're gonna. Think about that. I want to put it on the note that I'm putting in there. Yeah, but but that. anybody that's members, you guys are gonna get first access to like pure red lines and, and stuff like that. Um, like Shelby's Galaxy Shrimp, uh, we're not offering those to just anybody who's members only or, or YouTubers. They're my babies. Yeah. Stop if you guys Stop had hard. mentioned that you're Stop on YouTube, you guys got got hooked up on your orders or something like that. So. And I didn't mean like YouTubers, like people who do the videos. I'm talking to you guys who are watching on YouTube. But uh, it's been a long day. It's been an, almost an hour and a half in chat. I don't, I don't think we're going to go through and do our full two hours tonight. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and get uh, a good night's sleep tonight and jump on the water changes tomorrow. I want to do as many tanks on this new rack as I possibly can and get as many shrimp in here as i can so hopefully tomorrow there'll be like 20 empty tanks instead of like 70. so um so thank you for shouting that out jamie scotty said i'll email about the clash and message to buy and then Jeff Kane said, is there currently a code available? I will make one as soon as we log off here. I will make one and please message Grant because I will completely forget that you asked or write it down for me. Uh, we'll send that out to you. And then Jamie said, members only that live in the USA. <laughs> hey, Sorry. man, I am going to send you some Aquachar. But if it was you, your your package will have Aquachar in if it wasn't for um, that, you could use your code on buying Aqua Chalk. And Sigeti Nona said night. And Robert said good night. Cough, get me that order. Oh, yeah. It's my job to get the other half of the order to, so we can get the Shrimp Envy products on the website. And I just. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's his. It's his job. Message him. I did. I did the hard work. I like figured I said, it out. I just don't want to flood. Like I had to buy her two plants already this oh, weekend. They're beautiful. We went to the flea market and they're gorgeous hanging plants. I'm excited. Check this out. We went for bee pollen. The very first table we saw was the bee pollen people. I'm like, <laughs> perfect. We will catch you on the way out. Yeah, I we went through the entire flea market, walked out, drove off without going back to the bee pollen guy i'm like oh man i was looking for good gifts for my dad for father's day i'm holding plants i'm like let's go <laughs> we have been left without another plant because that heat really got to me it's terrible but 
No, Thank they you, bought everyone. It. Even if you wanted it, it was gone. Oh, yeah. Someone bought it. It was like a dinner plate hibiscus. If you don't know what those are, they're literally hibiscus the size of dinner plates. They're gorgeous. But... Thank you, everybody, for watching. We really appreciate all the members and everyone who comments and talks to us. We appreciate you. Yeah, thank you, guys. We appreciate it. And uh, you guys can catch us on here Wednesday night for our live stream. It will be Half Scaped Episode 3 with Chance and Brian. And uh, this should be a regular routine now, so you can catch us on this channel every other week for the odd episodes and then over on chance's channel chance kramer um for the even episode so if you haven't seen episode one or two you can catch up on those all right have a good night guys Bye. Bye, everyone.